Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be covering and going through the new MacBook Pro. I just received my MacBook Pro. Let me, let me pull it up here for you. 16 inch uh, with the M1 uh, Pro chip and I am so excited to walk you through this baby. It was honestly the most exciting day. It felt like Christmas or my birthday when uh, the package arrived and I'm really excited to walk you through it from content creation, from programming, from the specs that I got, everything uh, about this computer I wanna share with you today. Before we get into it though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. Shout out to some of these subscribers here. Thank you for your love, your support, your comments, your feedback. I see you and I just, I love you all. Okay, no more talking, let's just jump right into it. First off, I want to start by sharing some of the specs for you for the MacBook Pro that I got. So I got the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 Pro chip with 32 gigabytes of memory, 16 core GPU, which is up to two times faster than the M1, may I add. And also the M1 Pro delivers up to 1.7 times faster CPU performance than M1, all while maintaining the best in class performance per watt. Okay, you can tell that's already by these specs, it's going to be an incredible computer. The experience is going to be incredible. And honestly, there was so much hype around this release that I already had my expectations pretty high. So to have it delivered and get to play around with it and start working on it, I'm fangirling, I'm having a moment here. Okay, now that we covered the specs for the MacBook Pro I got, let's go into the updates and new features. First off, let's start with the design. You can tell immediately the moment you start unpackaging the new MacBook Pro that it was designed with optimal performance and capability in mind. There is more screen real estate and more advanced features. Also, I want to highlight the new thermal architecture that brings the new MacBook Pro's cooling capacity to its highest point yet. We'll get more into that later on in the video and you'll see why, but I really wanted to highlight that part of the design as well. Okay, next up, let's get into display. The Liquid Retina XDR display of the new MacBook Pro takes front of screen experience to a whole new level. The larger display that features higher pixel density, higher refresh rates thanks to ProMotion technology and extreme dynamic range and incredible contrast. From the moment you open up this computer, you will notice right away the high contrast in images and videos. It's probably one of the first things I noticed. Um, I'm a very visual person, so other than the obvious design changes to the hardware, uh, when I opened up the computer, turned it on, and started viewing some images and videos, I was blown away. Okay, let's move on to one of my favorite updates, which is the keyboard. I am a huge keyboard person, especially because as a software developer, I'm always typing on my computer. Um, and as someone who works remotely, I am oftentimes taking my MacBook Pro to different locations, not always necessarily working from home. So having a good keyboard honestly can completely change my workflow. Also, for any other developers out there, you will definitely enjoy the wider escape key, which aids touch typing in text editors of your choice. I love the feel of this keyboard. It feels very similar to a mechanical keyboard, which I know is all the rage right now and everyone wants one. And it just really makes typing, and typing quickly may I add, uh, a very seamless and easy process. Okay, now let's talk about connectivity. As many of you know, if you have been reading the reviews on the new MacBook Pro, they brought back the ports, or more ports, should I say, and I am so excited about this. The amount of different adapters I had uh, for my older previous MacBook Pros uh, to accommodate for the lack of uh, ports, I can honestly say firsthand now that they have, you know, from the SD card slot, the Thunderbolt 4, HDMI, headphone jack, MagSafe 3. I mean, I'm just so excited that they are back. Um, and no longer do I need to be constantly ordering different adapters. Okay, so let's go through it a little bit. The MagSafe technology comes back to the MacBook Pro with the MagSafe 3. The quick releasing MagSafe port now supports much higher power delivery into the system to support extremely fast charge. Another part of the connectivity I am really thrilled about is the external display support. So now it is more advanced. With the M1 Pro, you can connect up to two display XDRs. And the last thing I want to highlight for connectivity, although there is more I could keep on going on, is the SDXC card slot. As a content creator, I'm always using different SD cards and being able to just quickly insert them into the MacBook Pro now is 
I know it sounds so small, but it honestly is such a useful and helpful thing that I am so excited it is here. Another thing I really want to highlight is the camera. We are all working from home, or so many of us are, or even if you're back in the office, I feel like one thing that we are all getting so accustomed to now is video meetings. And having the camera that supports that is honestly essential nowadays. The MacBook Pro now has a FaceTime HD camera with a new four element lens with a wider aperture that lets in more light. So if you're someone like me and my laptop is usually, I use the camera right built into the MacBook Pro and when I'm taking meetings, it looks like I am in the shadows, even though as you can see, it's pretty light in my room. Uh, but if, if the lens is not letting in enough light, it honestly, it just looks horrible. So I'm very excited about this feature. I actually tried it uh, in one of my recent meetings and I can tell you firsthand, it is a crazy noticeable difference. Okay, so those are just some of the new updates and features. I feel like if I wanted to cover everything, this video would be at least an hour long, but I wanted to cover some that I was really excited about. Next up, I wanna cover really how good is this new MacBook Pro for coding or software development. As a software developer, I'm always looking for the latest and the greatest, and I wanted to put this computer to the test. This computer allows for software developers to be productive like never before. Okay, let's let's pause this for a second here and do a little do a little game, although we cannot see each other, you can just see me. Raise your hand if you have ever thought to yourself, I wish my project would build faster. I wish I had more hands. I feel like everyone who's watching this is raising their hands because everyone has had that thought. Sometimes I'll be like, I wish my project would build faster. I'm gonna go make myself a tea. I'm gonna go walk the dog. Okay, maybe they don't take that long, but it's a constant thought in my head. When I started playing around in Xcode, I was blown away by the noticeably fast speed of building projects. Actually, to get specific, it is up to two times faster compile speeds in Xcode on the 16 inch Pro. Another thing that stood out to me is the amount of builds you can do in one single battery life. There has been more than one time, actually probably countless times that I have commuted an hour to get to work, got to the office only to realize that I had forgot my computer charger at home. Spend the rest of the day bugging my coworkers frequently for their chargers and it's just so frustrating. With the new M1 Pro chip, you can get up to four times the compiles on a single battery charge, which is pretty crazy. Okay, a lot of you have also been asking about running Android Studio. If you've used Android Studio, you know it can make your computer hot. Maybe hot is even an understatement. And that is where I want to talk about thermal architecture again. The MacBook Pro was designed with thermal architecture that is the heat dissipating engine. So it helps drive sustained performance by cooling the system. The new MacBook Pro brings its cooling capacity to the highest yet. The new fans can move up to 50% more air at lower speeds than the previous generations. Finally, for all you game developers out there, you will appreciate the powerful graphics on M1 Pro when designing and testing graphics intensive apps and games. So as you can see, I've really spent a lot of time uh, going into the software development side of things, making sure that is this a computer that I want to do software development on? Is it something I'd recommend? And honestly, it is my, by far my number one choice and my number one recommendation for you. Okay, as you can see, I am very excited about this computer, mainly because my expectations were already so high and to have them completely blown out of the water is just a really great thing that very rarely when new tech comes out, you feel this excited about. So um, I'm just all across the board really excited about it. I hope this video was very valuable and helped you make the decision if you are going to upgrade. Once again, I can't stress enough that if you are thinking about it or are ready to kind of pull the plug and do it, definitely make the leap and uh, treat yourself, treat yourself to it because it will really help your workflow uh, for myself anyways, as a software developer. On that side, it's really improved things, but then also too on the content creator side from uh, the graphics, the design, the speed, everything like that, it's just made my life so much easier. So I guess that's why I'm probably over the top excited about this and it's, it's for a good reason. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you all soon. Thanks everyone.